1,801 earthquakes. Three exceeded a magnitude 6.0. Increasing seismic activity, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey folks! I hope you have had an awesome week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is September the 4th, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from August the 27th through September the 2nd. It was on this day in 1989, when a magnitude 6.9 struck Alaska. This strong earthquake originated from a remote area of the Alaskan Peninsula. Relatively minor damage was experienced in the town of China and oil stored at a refinery, some 400 miles away was sloshed. The Alaska Tsunami Warning Center issued a tidal wave warning for coastal Alaska and British Columbia, but the resulting wave was less than 6 inches high at Sand Point, Alaska. This went down in history as one of the largest earthquakes in the United States. This is what's happening, Hermine expected to strengthen back into a hurricane as it creeps up east coast. Officials up and down the northeast coast warned that Hermine could wallop the region with strong winds and a possible storm surge, as forecasters predicted that it could strengthen back into a hurricane later on Sunday. By Sunday morning, Hermine's top sustained winds remained at 65 mph as it moved east-northeast at 12 mph. It was expected to turn northward on Sunday, was centered about 295 miles southeast of Ocean City, Maryland. The National Weather Service said a tropical storm warning remains in effect for parts of Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, and New York which could experience wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour and life-threatening storm surges during high tide late Sunday and into Monday. Magnitude 5.6 Earthquake Rocks Oklahoma Residents across the state were rocked awake Saturday morning after an earthquake struck in central Oklahoma. The earthquake's epicenter was located 8 miles northwest of Pawnee. 21 miles south, southeast of Bonka City, 22 miles north, northeast of Stillwater, 44 miles south of Arkansas City, Kansas, and 73 miles north, northeast of Oklahoma City. It was about 4 miles deep. Use says the earthquake was felt in areas from Omaha to Dallas. Residents have called in to report damages, but there are no injuries at this time. Fire officials say there are several reports of structural damage in the downtown Pawnee area. In an interesting turn of events, Saturday's earthquake spurred state regulators in Oklahoma to order 37 disposal wells, which are used for fracking, to shut down over a 725 square mile area. Now, this is rather unusual. Hurricane concerned it caught something in Panama City, Florida. Tallahassee, Florida. Hurricane Hermine expressed concern Friday that it had caught something while in Panama City. Oh god, I definitely picked up something nasty there, because now it stings really bad every time I rain, the Category 1 hurricane told reporters, adding that it was also concerned about the runny 87 mile per hour discharge it recently noticed coming from its clouds. I'll admit things got pretty wild last night, and there was that period that was a total blackout, now my convection currents are all inflamed. Ugh, I thought it would be fun to go a little crazy in Panama City? I really should have known better than to spend the night there. At press time, a deeply embarrassed Hermine was circling back to inform all the communities it had had direct contact with since its stay in Panama City. You can view these articles and more at our Facebook page. Feel free to zoom over there when you have a moment. You can find the link in the description. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 1801 earthquakes. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 1,012. For those interested, we finished August off with a whopping 8,631 earthquakes. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 358 quakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 5.4 that struck Koban Kapi, Indonesia. Once again, we were presented with an incredibly interesting week. We experienced unusual movement, powerful earthquakes, and as a result, everyone has been left wondering what is this leading up to? As previously stated, 
we registered three earthquakes that fell within or exceeded the magnitude 6 category. We will begin with the 7.1 that struck Gisborne, New Zealand on Thursday, September 1st. This quake hit just 105 miles northeast of Gisborne with a depth of 19.1 miles. Fortunately, there were no immediate reports of injury or damage and the quake did not pose any danger of a tsunami on the Pacific coast of Canada or the United States. We follow this up by a 7.1 that hit the Ascension Island on Monday, August the 29th. For those interested, the Ascension Island is an isolated volcanic island in the equatorial waters of the South Atlantic Ocean. The earthquake struck at a shallow depth of just 6.2 miles below the ocean floor, according to the United States Geological Survey. The magnitude of the earthquake was initially reported as 7.4 and 6.9 before being confirmed at 7.1. As with the Gisborne quake, a tsunami was not generated. Next up, let's turn our attention to Papua New Guinea, where 6.7 struck on Wednesday, August the 31st. Australian seismologists estimated the quake, which hit in Papua New Guinea's eastern New Britain area, at 6.5 magnitude initially. This was later revised to a 6.7. Earthquakes are common in Papua New Guinea, which sits on the Pacific's ring of fire a hot spot for seismic activity due to friction between tectonic plates. No damage or injuries were reported. In total, we experienced 44 magnitude 5 plus earthquakes strike the globe this past week. This was a 25% increase when compared to the previous week. As you would expect, these earthquakes were centered mostly along the ring of fire, with New Zealand seeing most activity. Over the past week, they registered 17 magnitude 5 aftershocks alone the average magnitude being a 5.5. Wow! Outside of the Ring of Fire, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands continue to experience movement. Eight earthquakes in total that fell within the magnitude 5 realm. The strongest being a 5.6 that hit on Friday, September 2nd. We registered 111 magnitude 4 earthquakes. This was also an increase when compared to the previous week. In fact, this was an increase of over 33%. Seismic storms were limited to the usual locations like Indonesia, New Zealand, Japan, Chile, and Alaska. The most notable earthquakes include a 4.4 that struck Hay Fork, California on Sunday August the 28th and a 4.8 that hit Hoback, Wyoming on Saturday the 27th. The remaining earthquakes struck, for the most part, locations here in the States. We'll start with Hawaii, which experienced a return to an earthquake normal. 44 were registered, with the strongest being a 3.7 that struck Waimea. Swarm activity was centered around the volcano, which clocked in 17 earthquakes and around Pahala, which registered 11. Alaska clocked in 412 earthquakes. The strongest to strike was a magnitude 5 that hit Chinook Lake on Sunday, August the 27th. Washington registered 32. The most intense being only a 1.9 that hit Connell. The average magnitude for all earthquakes to strike Washington, yet again, was a 1.0. Oregon's earthquake activity, once again, remained largely unchanged when compared to the previous week's data. We experienced 18 quakes in total. The strongest registered was only a 2.7 that struck Lakeview. California experienced a 21% reduction in earthquake activity when compared to the previous week. This equates to roughly 679 earthquakes being registered over the past 7 days and on a daily basis, roughly 97 being experienced. The most powerful recorded was the previously mentioned 4.4 in Hayford on Sunday, August the 28th. This quake occurred at 5.21 am at a depth of 5.6 miles. It was felt as far away as Fresno, which is about 100 miles to the east. We follow that up with a 3.4 in Big Bear City which is a fantastic name by the way, a 3.1 in Ocotillo Wells, and a 3.1 in Crescent City. Even with a reduction in the sheer number of earthquakes, the intensity of some of these is alarming. It definitely makes one wonder exactly what will happen next. Eyes open people. Nevada registered 176 earthquakes last week. The strongest experience was only a 2.6 that hit Hawthorne. Swarm activity was limited to the usual locations. Idaho registered 8 all week. The most intense to strike was a 1.6 in Chalice. Montana experienced 29 earthquakes. This is roughly a 50% increase when compared to the previous week. 
The most intense registered was a 2.9 in Sealy Lake on Sunday, August the 29th. Swarm activity was limited to Whitehall and West Yellowstone, with each clocking in six earthquakes. Wyoming clocked in 74 earthquakes. This is a massive increase of 86%. Swarm activity was centered primarily around Hoback, which registered 45 aftershocks, and Moose Wilson Road, which accounted for 19 earthquakes. The strongest recorded was the previously mentioned 4.8 in Hoback. Interesting. Utah raked in 11. The strongest reported was a 2.0 in Panguitch. Kansas experienced 7. The strongest being a 3.2 in Ellis and 3.0 in Caldwell. Oklahoma clocked in 17. The strongest experienced being a 3.6 that struck Perry, a 3.6 in Enid, a 3.2 in Pawnee, and Medford with a 3.0. Speaking of Oklahoma, it will be interesting to see if we observe a decrease in earthquakes now that multiple fracking wells have been taken offline. The New Madrid Seismic Fault experienced movement as well. This includes a magnitude 1.2 earthquake that struck Lilburn, Missouri and a 2.4 in Ridgely, Tennessee. The North American Creighton also experienced movement. This includes a 2.4 in New Market and a 2.0 in Hopewell, Tennessee. Our Canadian allies experienced seismic movement as well. 12 earthquakes in total. The most notable being a 2.4 in Haynes Junction. Before wrapping up, I would like to take a moment and throw a shout out to subscriber, 222 Mission. Thanks for the conversation, sharing our videos, and for being quite funny. And that's it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Feel free to post about anything that is on your mind. Make certain to like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star.